All right, so um, I'm back uh, doing a tutorial that is long overdue. Um, this is like my 80th take. And um, it's a tough one to get through, actually. There's a, lot of, there's a lot more to it than I had originally thought. But this is uh, my version of Living the Dream by Sergio Simpson. And mm -hmm. I posted a video of it years ago, uh, two or three maybe, maybe longer, I don't know. Um, but I've had several people ask me to do a tutorial on it, so I figured I should do it. Um, so I'm going to try, um, I can certainly do that. Um, but bear with me cause I may have to start and stop quite a bit and I might get mixed up. I tried to write down what I'm going to talk about, but I'm sure I'll freaking wander all over the place, but all right. So I'll start with tuning and, um, strumming and all that good stuff. So I'm going to pan down a little bit. Um, okay. So. The way that I play it, I actually play it um, a half a step down. And as a lot of you know who follow me, I keep my guitar down a full step. So this is actually a, a D. Um, so I put the capo on the second fret to get me back to standard. So if you're in standard tuning already, you don't need a capo. It'll sound like mine. Um, if you do have your guitar tuned down also, just get your capo in the right spot to, so that we're playing the same pitch. Um, Okay, so the chords to the song are E. And first of all, disclaimer, this is not the, the studio album version or any other version of that Sturgill Simpson has ever played. This is a cover. This is the way that I play it. And I it just came out. I learned the basic chords and then started adding little fills and things, and this is just what happened. Um, so if you're looking for an exact copy, this isn't it. I would highly recommend maybe going to ultimateguitar.com or one of those other sites and getting like the official tab and learning it note for note. Um, but this is gonna get you through it. Um, okay, so E, A, and B7. And then there's gonna be little fills and licks and things in there that play off of the G scale, um, little F sharp in there, but we'll get to that. Um, okay, so the intro, um, I just did a take of this and it took me 10 minutes, so I'm trying to cut it down a little bit, but I'm going to play through the intro and there's three steps to it. It's all in E. It, you're always in an E chord and it's really more about the strumming pattern, um, but essentially what you're doing is you're playing an E chord and you're pulling off of the second fret of the fifth string. You're adding a bend on the third fret of the sixth string and then playing it open, the, which would be an E note. Here's the pull off, the bend on the third, open. And then each time after you go back to the E, you're gonna hammer onto the second fret of the fifth string. That's the first part of the of the intro and I don't play it that many times I'm just kind of repeating it so that you can kind of get an idea in your ear what I'm doing the second part is also still in the E shape and after you do you hit the E or the G on the sixth string third fret sixth string what I'll do is I'll add I'll hit the, the G note on the first string, which is the third fret of the first string. You'll hear that. If you go back and, and listen to the, the recording I did a couple years ago, you'll hear this. So that's all that is. It's just an add of a third fret of the first string and then open. is a riff that gets you from the G back up to the E, which is going to be your, the first chord of the verse. So you're kind of resolving, I guess. What I 
did there was, it's the third fret of the first string again, and you're bending it up, and then playing it open, and then the second fret of the second string, and pull off to open, and then the second fret of the third string, pull off to the second fret of the sixth string and bend that down and then open and you're back to the E. Go through that again. And I usually end with an upstroke kind of rake of the of the E chord. So I'm gonna play through the, the full intro um, with all those different bits. So that's the intro. Um, the next part will be the verse. And the verse, the chords are, it starts in E, it goes to A, comes back to E, and then B7, the first part of the verse. So when you start in E, your first transition to A is going to be a slide from the second fret of the fifth string to the fourth fret of the fifth string, and then the open fifth string into the A chord. And then back to E. And then the B, B7. So he plays the B7, and right after he plays the B7, he adds a hammer onto the, or I add a hammer, I, should, I keep saying he, I add a hammer onto the first fret of the B7, which is the first fret of the fourth string. And I know he does this a lot. That's where I got it from. I'm not taking credit for it at all. Now, when he transitions back to E, he does that hammer, and then what I do is I take the second fret of the fifth string and similar to what we did on the intro of the E chord, I pull off of that fifth fret or fifth string, second fret. And then I hit the, the F sharp note, which would be the second fret of the sixth string back to the E. So going through that first verse again, it starts with E slide to A, B7, hammer on the first fret, back to E. So then you go back through the E to the A, back to the E, but I don't do the slide on the second, the second part of the first verse. So starting at the top of the first verse, you're in E, slide, A, back to E, E, as the truth comes back, B7, bittersweet. I usually end just like the intro on a quick little upstroke and then when it goes into the chorus there ain't no point getting out of bed it's it starts out in a there ain't no point to e b7 hammer on that first fret of the four string and then after the B7, 
goes back to A. I don't need to change my strings because of E. To B7. And then I don't have to do a goddamn thing. It's E. A. Hold on a second. Scratch that. It's E. I don't have to do a goddamn thing to B7. Sit around and wait to die. Back to the E. And when you get back to the E, then you start the intro again. So it's also a, a kind of a break between chorus and verse. to the next verse. I've been waiting on an angel waitress. Slide. Come and take my order. Back to E. Tell me all about the special today. B7. Transition. Pull off. Bend second fret of the sixth string. Back to E. Staring at a puddle of mud in my spoon. Well, I A. Couldn't be much border. Up in them circles on the paper, don't call back. Tell me, B7, telling me the star today. Okay, now when you get back to the E at this point, and you're going to go into the next part of the verse, there's a little walk up that he does. Telling me the star today. So he goes to the F sharp, second fret of the sixth string, third fret of the sixth string fourth fret of the sixth string, and then A. Well, that old man upstairs low, E, wears a crooked smile, staring down on the chaos he created, B7. And then you do that transition again. And then he goes back to A. Said, son, if you ain't having fun, just wait, E, wait a little while. Mama's gonna wash it all away. She thinks that mercy, B7, overrated, with it back to the E. Okay, now he gets, what I do is I do like a kind of a break where I just play through the chords. But when I'm playing through the chords, I add a lot of the the E's or the G's on the third fret of the first string and the um, third fret of the sixth string. So if I went back through that, where's a crooked smile staring down the chaos he created? Said some. the G, which would be the third fret of the first string. B7. So I know I went through that fast, um, but what I'm hoping is that you're, you're picking up on the chord transitions. And when I'm saying that I'm, you hear those high notes, all I'm doing is I'm, I'm playing the third fret of the first string. It's just adding a G. And when you hear it, it's going to be the third fret of the sixth string. It's always G. One of those two. So I'm going to go through it again this solo part, or it's not really a solo, it's more of a break where I play through the chords before he goes back into the chorus again. So it would be...
play the intro again. Back to the chorus. There ain't no point in the bed. E. Like in the big old pot of coffee. You ain't got no B7. man that was kind of a crash course um i hope you're picking up like when i'm playing through and i'm, I'm kind of calling out the chords like when you're looking at my hands that's an a that's an e when you see my pinky start to come down here it's the only time i do that that's a b7 well, my hands just kind of covering everything up but that's what's if you can recognize that shape then if i'm not calling it out i hopefully i did every time those are the chords that i'm playing when my hands look like this so e a b7 that's what i can give you um i'm gonna post this and depending on I think depending on what level of what skill level you're at, you may be able to pick up on this. If you're if you can't, like just let me know in the comments. Say, hey, I got like half of it. If you can slow down and maybe do the chorus one more time or something like that, that would help me out. Um, because you know, I can jam with buddies and I can teach a song to one guy and like literally just say, These are the chords and they'll make it better than I could, ever could. And there's certain other people that like you have to like say hey put your finger here and i don't know where everybody's at and everybody's going to be at different skill levels so if you need something hit me up in the comments um but hopefully that gets you going on how to play living the dream the way that i play it um good luck and uh hope to post more soon thanks <laughs>